some of our uh, 2019 uh, objectives. Uh, of course, we wanted to rehabilitate our sewer system, which has been an almost uh, so that we can uh, we can work toward improving our sanitary sewer system, and of course, eliminate sanitary overflows in the sewer system. Uh, upgrade the system and facilities uh, to maximize potential lift stations. Mud Creek is one of our wastewater treatment plants, and the other is with the Coochie and, and implement the advanced technology that we spoke about last time, including our skater system. So that you know where we are with that implementation and some of the other things that we decided to include in that implementation. So one thing on our wastewater plants, the upgrade of the lift stations. Uh, you know, I think we're 90% we're, we're there, 95% there on the lift stations. Uh, we've had uh, several key storm events, and uh, all of those systems have operated flawlessly, <coughs> and uh, we expect those to continue. And we are continuing to harden those systems. Uh, the generators that we had talked about last time, those 10 new generation units, power generation units, which is one of the vulnerabilities of lift stations, those have been procured, uh, built, and installed at the lift stations. Uh, they've been tested, and uh, we're proud to say that once we've had a few power failures, and uh, all of those systems have come up and run, and, uh, and, and met our needs. Uh, Mud Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant, that plant has been performing well, as well as with the Coochie, we've had no significant uh, equipment failures at those facilities. Those of us who work in utilities, you know, those things are monsters, the wastewater treatment plants, and, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of, of uh, assets there. So, uh, you know, we're, we're working on those things. We have dedicated crews that work there every day with a primary purpose of maintaining those facilities and making sure that the redundant equipment that we have there is ready to perform in case we do have equipment those. With the SCADA system, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a moment, but uh, that project is moving along. Uh, you know, some of the things that we're seeing, uh, this picture to the left, you know, that's some of our sanitary, sanitary sewer uh, infrastructure here in the city. You know, in the south, uh, probably Tennessee south, a lot of petrified clay pipe was used in the sewer system till the early to mid-70s. Uh, most cities are going to see uh, there's a vitrified clay pipe in their sanitary, sanitary sewer system. And the reason it was put in was it's impervious to hydrogen sulfide, which, is, which, which was the major culprit of, um, of sewer system decay at the time. So it worked great for, uh, for uh, not being susceptible to decay as a result of hydrogen sulfide. Unfortunately, there are some things that were not so prevalent in the 50s, 60s, and 70s that are very, very prevalent now. One being, I know in Valdosta and some other areas that I travel, you know, there's fiber optic cable going in everywhere. You know, people are trying to improve the infrastructure and get internet services and high-speed internet to the masses. So, you know, this directional boring equipment that you see uh, in many, many places, that vitrified clay pipe will not hold up to a directional bore machine. You know, it's putting many, many tons of hydraulic pressure on that missile when it's shooting, and it really doesn't care what's in the way. So if it comes across a piece of vitrified clay pipe, it's going to knock the top or the bottom or the side out. In this case, it was a piece of uh, a missile, a directional bore that went, that struck the side of this pipe, knocked the side of it out. And of course, it was discovered when our crews are out trying to find I and I uh, inflow and infiltration that's affecting our system when we have a uh, very, very heavy and sustained rainfall. Um, this is a piece of pipe that's being, uh, that will be replaced and uh, by cured in place. Now, what we will do in this instance, we will dig down on that one particular place and we will do a point repair, but the rest of the pipe will be repaired and cured in place. Some of the projects that we, one of the projects that we talked about that was in work last time was Iola Drive, replacing 315 feet of sewer main and upsizing that to 24 inch to handle additional flows. Uh, that project is complete and the uh, manholes associated with that project. Of course, we put in a few manholes or rehab 
some of those minerals. Those next uh, projects there, Browns Canal, William Street, and CIPP, Secured in Place Project Number 9, and Mantle Rehab Number 6 projects are projects that are uh, either currently in work or they're projected for the FY20 uh, budget year. Uh, the Browns Canal, uh, some folks last time we were here asked about our sewer improvement program and asked for a copy of it, and we were able to get that distributed to most folks uh, that asked for it in one form or another. These are some of the projects that we identified. We had a consultant come in and identify what projects can we do to significantly reduce the amount of inflow and infiltration. And they gave us a list of projects that were high priority and medium priority and low priority. And they also tried to assign how much I and I would reduce if we completed these projects. We're hitting those high priority projects first. That Browns Canal project is in place. It's, in, it's being worked on right now. It's about 1,000 feet, uh, 970 feet of sewer main that we're replacing and also upsizing it to 18 inch to take on some additional flows that we're experiencing uh, in the city as it grows. The Williams Street replacement is another one of those projects that was on that list, a, a, a project that would significantly reduce our I and I, and that project also. Security in place project number nine, city council gave us authority to move forward with that. That's about 3,000 feet, 3,140 feet from sewer main that we'll be replacing uh, via uh, security in place process, via security in place process. And of course, our manhole project, pro projects that we do every year, uh, we, we have uh, 30 of those manholes in that project this year as well. We also, during the budget year, we asked for and received the authority to purchase our own equipment to do manhole rehab. We're going to work in conjunction with contractors that are out in the field in those projects as well. That was approved, and we're preparing to secure that equipment. We expect to have the equipment and the training completed by November. At that time, uh, we'll have some crews available and trained and ready to go out and start uh, directing some additional manuals. We anticipate we'll get 50 or more done this year uh, with that project. Typically, we do 30 or so. Uh, we're going to uh, shoot to increase that by 75% this year for our manual project. Uh, and our technology that we were, were uh, implementing, that project is nearing completion. Our contractor is telling us that uh, and we are projected by mid to late summer, we will have that project complete, it's on pace. We met with them last week and they uh, displayed some of the screens and some of the equipment that they are currently installing. So uh, it, looks, it looks very, very promising. We, we know that that's going to make a big difference in our, in our ability to locate where we're getting additional inflow and infiltration into the system. And it's also going to significantly reduce our cost time when we see an event uh, that happens. You know, one thing this system does is it allows all of the facilities to speak to each other. All of the lift stations, all of the treatment facilities, the uh, stormwater facilities, uh, manhole monitoring when we put the technology in, in some areas that we know that we get significant flow from, all those systems can talk to each other. So if the manhole monitoring equipment sees an increased flows, it can tell the lift station, you're going to have some increased flows coming in 20 minutes. Go ahead and pump down. The lift station can empty any wet well volume that it might have in there, anticipating that it's going to have to work extra hard in a few moments and bring on some additional pumps. So all the systems will be able to talk to each other and let each other know that there's additional uh, additional flow. Um, and of course, you know, one of the things that we have been working on was building some additional storage with the food. Now, we talked about uh, last time about what that plant was to 
designed to do initially. And we know that we get about 3.5 to 4 million gallons a day of flow into that plant. We designed it to take on three to four times of, the, of that projected flow. And then we built an additional 6 million gallons of storage in case we couldn't uh, meet those uh, or handle those additional flows. But when we got that 13 and a half, moved uh, 13 and a half into the rain in a less than 48 hour period, it just plant just came overwhelmed. So this is the facility that we're planning on installing there. Uh, we have about 30 percent plans design done. Uh, now there's already a hole dug there. We went out there with a piece of equipment and just started digging. But we are still waiting for ECD approval. We're still waiting for EED approval on that. And uh, they're telling us they're about 60 percent complete with the uh, with the review of our permit request. So. Uh, we're anticipating within the next 30 days, the engineer will have those plans. And they ask for some additional information too, not just plans. They ask for uh, uh, some development information and some security information uh, that gave them some comfort on how much rainfall would have to fall for the plant to be overwhelmed again. So all of that data is forthcoming from the engineering 